first of all, I'd like to uh, apologize for the fact that I missed a very important guest of mine who wasn't here at the time that the guests were introduced or at least she was hiding. Terry Recky, way over here in the end. Just uh, here on a paparazzi uh, run. <laughs> my daughter Terry, who used to run this place, of course, for, for 11 years until the kids had to go to school and they had, had to move down to Quincy. Anyway, and, and, and uh, I'll, I'll also put in $20 for a big trip that we just had. Terry and her sister and, and uh, my son Gordon uh, took a trip up the Alaskan coast as far as uh, Skagway, and we just had a marvelous time on, 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 on the newest uh, 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 deluxe uh, boat that you've ever seen, about six blocks long. And uh, it was just magnificent, state of the art in every way. We've got ten swimming pools and, and hot tubs and, and uh, you name it. Anyway, uh, t today we're going to talk uh, a little bit about Fox Lake, but uh, uh, the way we're going to start off is to, to get it out of that source, and that's somebody that spent uh, many winters up here and many summers maintaining the uh, Bucks Lake facilities. George McHugh, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, 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 your experiences and, and George uh, left here in 1951, <laughs> 61, when they finished automating the system. And no, nobody here has a, has a dam tender since. But our final dam tender, George. George McHugh. <laughs>
accumulate overtime because of the isolation. And one time George Works, who was our division manager, complained to me. He says, George is making more money than I am as uh, up here at Petroleum Lake. And we thought that was quite interesting. George, really, I wish you could have watched him on his skis when he used to come into Quincy in the old days. He, uh, he slew shot off this hill like a shot of lightning. And George, it's good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. 
very costly project. And you're, you're following along that road over the top of a 30-inch um, uh, uh, pipeline that brings water from three lakes and all the tributaries along the way run into that, that pipeline and dumps it into the lower lakes where it can there, there, there will therefore be used for power. They, they built a dam at the lower end of the third lake and then dug a trench, uh, the, uh, the, the deep trench between uh, the second lake and the first lake so they could drain the second lake too. But so in the, in, in the fall, uh, those, those two lakes were pretty well drained and back, back down to uh, or below their original uh, levels. The third lake, of course, of course, is still very beautiful and pristine and, and uh, is best for fishing. Um, but anyway, the, the, the costs were greatly exceeded their expectations and uh, uh, that, that contributed to the, the, to the end of Great Western Power and, and PG&E took over the facility in the middle of the construction, or early stages of the construction. Um, the, uh, the, the, before that, of course, the, the uh, there were there were some miners who come up through here once in a while, and some, some uh, um, a, lot, a lot of miners heading for the uh, for the uh, area south of here, where most of the gold was. But also, the miners could not get through the Feather River Canyon; it was it was impenetrable. Uh, so so they uh, a lot of the miners would come up to Bush Ranch up uh, over the pass out here, and, and then and then go up Mill Creek and over the top and drop down into Rich Bar, and. Uh, uh, you, uh, maybe some of you have read the, the, the famous, uh, well-known uh, Shirley letters telling about the winters at Rich Bar uh, and, and accounting, of, uh, 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 accounting, accounting for a lot of the uh, mining that went along at Rich Bar and, and places in between. <coughs> and, and even around Buck Lake, there was a lot of, of, of mines that, uh, 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 pit mines that, that uh, were uh, in, in use and, and also some, some of the cave mines and, and, and those are still uh, evident. Uh, a lot of the old mining around here is, is, is still evident. Uh, but during the, the uh, uh, time uh, that Beckwith came, came over here, he, he wanted, of course, to, to convert the, 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 the trail that had been used over the, through this area and, and over the, the down the ridge uh, eventually to, to Bidwell Bar, he wanted to convert that to a wagon bar. And uh, he, he uh, got some, some money out of the bankers at Marysville because the, the miners down there could, uh, could uh, or the, the, the bankers in, in Marysville could see a bright future for, for Marysville as a terminus of the, of the, of the, uh, of the uh, mining trail and, and the pull it out of the Oroville area and Bidwell Bar area. And Marysville was a tremendous of the uh, of the um, uh, ferry boats that used to come or the uh, tugboats that used to come up the rivers. But anyway, uh, uh, Marysville had a big fire, and and and, and, the, and, and the money who was promised uh, uh, Beckwith, who was the son of a of a slave, a black guy, money that was promised promised him when he got this road finally built, he never did get to it. But that 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 opened the road, but he opened the road at least to uh, 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 buggy uh, transportation, and then along all along the old road to Oroville were old hotels uh, about every ten miles because of the, that, that was about as far as the old carriages could get in those days. Uh, the, there was a hotel, of course, Tolgate down here. <coughs> Uh, and then, uh, then the hotel here at, uh, at Bucks Ranch, and then the hotel at, uh, at, at Letterbox, and then uh, another one at, uh, at uh, French Hotel and, and Merrimack and, and the Junction House, uh, and on down there was uh, an old hotel. The, the first one out of Oroville was Miner's Ranch. So there was about 10 hotels between here and Oroville. Uh, that, uh, have a dozen. The only one that remains now is the one at Mountain House. And all of you have been by that. And it's being bypassed now by the new highway that's uh, um, uh, leaving the uh, 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 Mountain House Hotel kind of off the road, so to speak. Uh, but anyway, the, um, the miners frequented this area for many, for many, many years. And, uh, uh, the, uh, and uh, uh, Bidwell Bar was generally the terminus of, of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, uh, route. The old Bidwell Bar Bridge is still uh, sets in uh, uh, one of the upper stages of Lake Oroville where uh, you could 
review it. It's the oldest suspension bridge in, in, in the country, and uh, it was brought around the horn uh, to put up the door of the Corbell during the uh, gold rush days. <coughs> uh, out in the out in the meadow here, we had two big ranch sites. So we had the Rutherford Ranch, ranch away down on the Mill Creek end of the lake, and, and we have Bucks Ranch, which is down here. It's, it's right out from, from the Bucks Marina down here. It's a little way, way uh, under about uh, 50 feet of water. And, and those were the big uh, hotels and cattle ranches. And, and uh, 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 when, when, the, when the dam went in, uh, of course, they had to pull all of the, uh, the timber out of the lake. Uh, and, a, and a guy by the name of Ed Lane you know, the, 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 uh, bid on the timber at the bottom of the lake and, and uh, logged it off. But in the process of burning the, the uh, 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 debris uh, after he sold the timber off, uh, uh, he got some fires, let, let, let fires get away from him and burned a lot of the land over in the Mill Creek end of the land, over at the Mill Creek end of the, of the lake and, and the lake bottom and, and a lot of, of, of uh, land up in the uh, west end uh, also uh, over towards where my house is that was burned during the uh, uh, 1926 and 27 fires. But anyway, with the, with the uh, uh, revenue he got from, from the uh, 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 timber in the lake bottom, he, uh, he built the uh, Bucks Lodge. And, and Bucks Lodge at that point was a state-of-the-art uh, built in about 1929-30. Uh, was a state-of-the-art lodge, and it still stands as it was then, except it's been remodeled a number of times and enlarged. And the three log cabins, imitation log cabins on the on this side of the, of the road, from the other side of the road above the lodge, uh, are some of the originals. And, 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 and they haven't changed much inside or outside. People that have read them will tell you that. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course he has the modern facilities to go with. <coughs> but um, the uh, the Rutherford uh, ranch was around the other side, and then the Rutherford uh, family was given first uh, first option at uh, uh, summer home lots up here when, when they laid those out in, in, in uh, 1928. Uh, and, and so the Rutherfords moved up to where they could see the whole lake down there and the whole, the whole, of the whole lake in particular their end of the lake and they, they live there today. Um, my first uh, trip up here was in about 1928 and I'm camping down at uh, 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 Grizzly Creek first and then, and then uh, up to uh, the, the campground over here and I can just barely remember, remember that the lake the same lake bottom, bottom as it filled, started filling up in 1929. Um, the first uh, um, first dam tender up here was a guy by the name of uh, Pat Patterson, and uh, he was uh, tending all, all three of the lakes: the the, the Bucks Lake, the Lower Bucks Lake. Grizzly Lake, <coughs> plus the three lakes and, and all, all, the, all the pipelines and power lines and, and, and whatnot in between. In between. And uh, I was a little kid in those days and I would ride around it in his, in his pg and &E pickup. Uh, so I got, uh, got to know all the facilities pretty well from one end to the other. And uh, then one, one day, uh, 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 later on, when I was in high school, uh, guy that heads up the snow survey department for the, the state asked Patterson if there's anybody around that could line up, uh, uh, mark out the ski trail between uh, Bucks and Three Lakes. He said, well, Wilbur Vaughn over there might be able to do that for you. He's a teenager, but he's, he knows the area pretty well. So I got my first job with the state uh, um, of California uh, marking the, the ski trail, putting, putting license plates way up on the trees visible from that one from the other so that the skier, skiers in the wintertime could follow the, follow a route up uh, to the three lakes to make the snow surveys up there and, and uh, also the snow course at Mill Creek. And that led to, uh, uh, after I went into the service, uh, I was in the uh, Tenth Mountain Division of uh, World War II, the, the, the 
but, but uh, there was more to it than just mar marking out ski, tra <coughs> ski trails. We, we, we were putting, a, putting up uh, storage tanks that would store the precipitation for the whole year, so they know what the, what the precipitation was relative to relative one year, one year to another to another year, and also from one area to another area, area of remote places. And nowadays, those are all done automatically too. So these towers that, that we put these <coughs> these uh, cones on to, to collect the precipitation for the for the, for the season are are, 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 now, are now obsolete and being taken down. So uh, and we built our log cabins too for the uh, uh, for the snow surveyors. And, and I did I did snow survey work every uh, the first of every month for the state during my college, and that's the way I got my got my. Uh, for my way through college along with the GI Bill. So uh, th th those are some of the things that uh, I did up to that time. And then uh, uh, later on, uh, uh, I, uh, I had a, I was hiking over here one day. Um, I, got, got, I got to love all this area. And, 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 I, and, I, and I had the idea that this should stay pristine as, as much as possible. And, and, and uh, one day I was hiking over here on the far side of the lake, and I saw some blue stripes around the trees, uh, paint, and, and I knew what that meant. Uh, and, 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 and somebody was surveying up for timber harvesting over there. And, and um, a guy by the name of Bill Peterson was then the then the, um, the, the uh, headed up the the Thomas National Forest. So I knew him pretty well. Because we'd had, we'd had, I had gatherings with him here and there. I, I went down there one day and I said, uh, uh, I asked Bill if, if, he was, if, if, if these, if they really were planting timber sales over there on the north edge of the lake. And he said, yes, we have it all surveyed and we're going to start putting roads in there next year. And I have to raise my dander a little bit. And that was really kind of my end of the friendship with Bill Peterson. Uh, so I, I came back up here and, and, uh, and talked to several people about that, and, uh, and nobody was in favor of logging that side of the lake. And um, I, I went back down and, 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 and talked to Bill, and I said, Bill, if you start building roads around that lake, the first thing your dozers are going to have to move out of the way will be me. So, uh, and I was pretty, pretty, I was pretty serious about that. And um, so we came back and we, we got committees going and, and uh, uh, to petitions and, and uh, 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 we, got, uh, we gathered a lot of forces that were interested in maintaining the far side of the lake uh, and, 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 uh, and, and we, we, we started a big battle with the uh, timber industry and, and um, a friendly battle that it went on and on and on and it was 15 years. Uh, it was 15 years exactly from the time that I went in it to talk to Bill Peterson and the time that we got the bill finally through Congress uh, to make that a vote in this area. And it's all, it's all documented in a, in, 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 in a museum in, in Quincy if anybody is ever interested, interested in the background of the, of the wilderness area. It's all down there and, and, and for anybody to read. But anyway, uh, that's a little bit of, 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 about the, uh, 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 the Buck Lake area. Um, uh, and, and as I have uh, high spotted it uh, to you, and, and uh, um, I'll add a couple of things. Uh, this building right here, this room, there used to be a service station here. The service station here was where the lobby is now. And, and, and uh, this room was added on as a dance hall. Everybody danced in those days. In those days. And, and there were three resorts up here, and they all had dance every Saturday night and Friday night. Bucks Lodge, this one, and, and, and uh, um, Haskins Alley Resort. It took Bucks Lodge a long time to get into the dancing act. <coughs> but uh, I used to come over in robots when I was a teenager. and. Uh, and, and dance all, all night and, and, and then go home. And uh, uh, motors weren't invented in those days. Uh, <laughs> and the fishing was all done by, by trolling. I'd go out and troll, for, I'd go out and row the boat for my, for my dad while he tried.
control. And that's what uh, the kind of, I guess the kind of, I was never a fisherman. Uh, I think that's the kind of, But I was a good rower. And I would row that boat for miles and miles and miles out there from my dad. And uh, I got so tired of doing that that uh, fishing uh, kind of bored me. So I didn't, uh, I, I didn't get, uh, uh, I didn't hook many fish out of Bucks Lake. It was the only time, the only time I've ever enjoyed fish, fishing it was on backpack trips in the high Sierra country where you get gold and trout up about 10,000, 12,000 feet. And you can, on our backpack trip, which was Terry's in many of them, and uh, a backpack trip, you just take a little ball of twine and a little bit of twine and a little uh, a six foot, foot a liter and a couple of hooks and, and, and uh, some salmon eggs and you can, within 10 minutes you can get enough golden trout to satisfy your needs for dinner. So that's the way I like to fish. Never had a fishing license in my life. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, but Lux is pretty still, still it, it's better, much better fishing now than it was in those days. If you want to see the fish, you got to go up uh, here at Bucks Creek Bridge about, the, about the, the first couple of weeks of October, and you can't see the bottom of the creek because the, 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 the salmon are, are uh, uh, so thick spawning up the creek that uh, it just looks black with fish down there. But uh, uh, let me uh, ask you if there's any questions about uh, Bucks Lake that I can that I can answer. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about, uh, little bit about uh, our first house up here. Uh, my dad was in the grocery business, and, and that's the way he got to know the first dam tender up here. Is, is he, would, he would deliver groceries to them for, for the winter use. And that was several pickup loads. In those days, uh, in those days it was a 100-pound bag of sugar and 100 pounds of beans and 100 pounds of rice and stuff like that, and 10 cases of milk. And, and everything was by the case or by the bag and, and, and big quantities because there were initially three but uh, three dam tenders up here and then down to two and then, and then down to one, uh, one. But for years and years it was two dam tenders and, and for two dam tenders it took a lot of groceries. My dad was in the red and white business in, in Oroville and, and, uh, during that time. And, uh, uh, anybody that, how many people know what red and white is? The old, the old timers know what red and white. The old red and white brands there were red and white stores all over the place. We're going one right down here on Main Street in, in Quincy, and there I think there's still a the red and white sign over in, Porto, in downtown Portola. There was, there was a couple of years ago. Anyway, the red and white uh, brand was everywhere. And there were two of them in Oroville, and uh, my, my, my dad, Bond's red and white was uh, my dad's store, and uh, pretty well known. And uh, they, they, they would deliver anywhere. My dad would de deliver groceries up the Feather River Canyon yeah. long before the highway opened. The Feather River Highway yeah. uh, opened uh, on my birthday in August yeah. in 1937. It opened in August of 37, and in December of 37 we had a massive flood. And, and that uh, the, 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 the all of the lava washed out, and it was about a year before they got it open again. Uh, and and uh, you remember that. <laughs> and uh, um, they had had many floods since, but it's held up pretty well. But uh, a, a little bit about the construction of the Bucks Dam, you might not realize. The trucking industry was not big in, in, in <coughs> back in the 20s. The, the rail industry was. Most of what you see around here uh, in the way of uh, uh, facilities, anything metal or cement, all that came up the tramway from Feather, it, it, it came up the railroad to Story in, on the railroad, and, 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 and including the locomotives, and then it came down, down the tramway at Story to, to where the village of Story is. And then truck over to the bottom of the tramway that comes up to the, to the, to the top of the, uh, the penstock. And then there was a railway that went the 12 miles from the penstock over here to Bucks Lake. So all of this came in by rail. And, and, and part of the rail was still there. I have a piece of rail over my yard in fact. Part of the rail, railroad was still there until uh, it was gathered up in, uh, in the uh, early 30s for uh, scrap iron that was sent to Japan. And, um, but uh, 
at the time that we built over here, we, we built and, and used, utilizing most of the material from the old, old, some of the old bunk houses down below the dam uh, that uh, old Patterson said that we could take take apart because they were going to burn them. So a lot of our the, the material we have in our modern cabin over here now, uh, that when we rebuild it, we, we utilize a lot of it for, for subsiding. And we have one, one window left that was still in our house over there that uh, was uh, used in, uh, in some of the old bunk houses. And, and the, the, uh, the, the benches that we have out in our yard were benches uh, from the subfloor of the railroad trussle that crossed the creek right behind our house there and connected what is now West End Road with what is Quarry Road. It used to be all one because they hauled rock from the rock quarry by rail into the dam for, for filling. Uh, I don't want to talk any longer because it's getting late here and you want to get an early start back. Can I answer any questions? I could go on and on talking about Buck Clay. I don't want to bore you. Yes. I was just wondering, what year was the Wilderness Act finally passed? It was 1984. Uh, we got through Congress. Any other questions? Yes. So we're having the Franks Hotel fit in. I, at one point, I got the the, fa the Fax Hotel up here in, in, in uh, Bucks Highlands is still standing, and it was a hotel used for the miners up in this area. There was a lot of mining went on up in the uh, uh, Fax Ranch area. Uh, the big facilities up there, there was a, a small hydraulic operator, uh, hydraulic op operation that got the water from a place that's called uh, uh, not uh, or Lake. Uh, What's the lake in New York where the, where the, where the, where the uh, Placid. Placid, yeah, Lake Placid. The whole lake called Lake Placid up there. They got the water from to do the, uh, the uh, hydraulic mine up here in the, in the Highlands area. A lot of mining there and a lot of mining down into the river on, 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 in the middle part, too. And uh, uh, the, the, one of the owners of, of, of the lodge, of the last lodge, lodge over there, Haskins Valley Resort, which was a big operation. Uh, uh, he wrote a book about uh, the mining operation down there, and I have a copy of it at the house. Uh, we have some mining area around here too, but not, not much. Most of it's up here in the Highlands area, which is about uh, 500 feet vertical above the lake level here. Any other questions? Uh, yes. No, I can't get any sense out of our president, but could you tell me which knothead wrote the words to this song that's on the that, table? That's a, that's a good question. Jeez. Uh, uh, maybe we should offer a, a, a 